Hello there, everyone. Uh, I'm just a random uh, Jewish person, and I'm here just to kind of uh, explain some of the basics of Judaism uh, for any beginners or um, people who are interested in the faith. It's kind of hard to um, understand at first, so um, I'm just here to help out because, uh, you know, it's a great it's a great spirituality, and anyone who wants to be a part of it, I mean, that's great, you know, we can do an amazing thing in the world, we, um, really, I mean, it's just, I think it's just the truth of the universe, it's a wise way to exist, but, um, one thing that people have trouble kind of understanding is, uh, they think that, uh, Judaism is all about, like, just following the exact instructions of the Torah, but actually it's a lot uh, deeper than that because um, it's really an intense meditation on the whole scope of things. Nothing is excluded. Don't exclude anything. Act from your full being and don't become a robot. Um, there is both a uh, good and evil within the Torah and what we're supposed to do is to listen to God more so than we listen to the Torah because once again Torah is just an idol it's just instructions that were ancient but um it's like the Jews we um reject that someone else is supposed to do it for us. We believe each of us has to take it into our own hands and in doing that we come to a place that kind of transcends time and transcends it's basically oneness with with Hashem you know oneness with uh, Yahweh and like you know um it's like, so you're going and you're reading it, and it's like, you know, um, you start out, and it's like, just understand that you can change anything in the book. Karma is ultimately what applies. Karma applies, and that's the ultimate law, and that's what's obvious. And so anything is free game to change. It's just that if you change it for a negative or selfish purpose, it's going to affect your karma badly. And basically that's how it is. So as we enter it in the first, like as you're reading and on a, just a, a Torah that you might just buy from a store in modern times, it's incredibly outdated. Um, you're gonna come up with a lot of stuff that is immoral, like, um, uh, it tries to get you to, like, watch, like, read about people's, uh, sexual encounters and things, and this is not, like, that's not really what it's about, you know? It's not about that, it's not, like, uh, so really what it is is, like, an open source code that's like asking us to begin again and go into it and just like put down stuff you know and like but it's not like the Nazis because what they did was they destroyed the entire book and they started killing people over it but what we're doing is trying to stop people from being killed trying to stop people from being taken into slavery by saying, you know, we're actually not supposed to just follow this without thinking. Because that would be equal to people who follow a fascist leader without thinking. We're supposed to listen to our hearts foremost and combine that with the basic root that we find in Torah. And through doing that, as we add our conscious conscience to what we see in there, um, beauty is created and it opens up these ancient energy pathways in the universe that 
will then start to it will affect everything in your life it's totally mystical it's totally divine but you have to take the first step in changing the parts that are immoral that's absolutely integral to doing it or else you're just going to end up in the same place over and over again where it's justified that you're ending up in that place because the things you're doing are not morally sound and they're causing suffering for other beings. So if you can take out all of that, which does take a long time, but it's actually a process that's, it's an artistic process, you know? It's a process of art and prayer. And as you're praying and as, you know, the Torah becomes more so, it really just like takes your life to a whole new level and you see how like amazing good can happen but it's like you kind of have to integrate the light and the shadow you have to be willing to do that and to then remove the evil because darkness is not evil evil is evil evil is fragmentation and fragmentation can come from anything but once it's fragmented it's like it can't really survive nothing fragmented survives to be holy is to be whole that's what it means it means that you're whole and even the name Torah is holy as in Tor as in you've torn out the um that which is not whole from the book and you've made it whole by replacing it with what is right what you know is right in your heart and that's the entire metaphor of like israel at this moment okay it's hard to explain but first of all israel is not a physical place it's a it's a spiritual state of being um the name Israel actually means heart. It means heart. It is the heart. So it's not really a place that's beyond us. And what we're doing, what they're talking about in like the news is not really, it's a very bad translation of what's truly happening, okay? It's not about kicking out Palestinian people. Truly, if you're truly in the Holy Land, anything that's there is good, okay? There's not, it's not like everyone has to be exactly the same as you. Anything there is divine, okay? But the metaphor that they're talking about and explaining without truly understanding is that you're going through the Torah and you are casting out the letters which are which causes suffering, which are not just, which are saying that it's just like nepotism and it's just that like this one race is above every other race and that, you know, they're able to just go and kill and fight in battle and they'll always win because that is not the true way of God. What does that sound? That sounds like Nazism and that's exactly what the whole story is about. It's saying, like, when we begin to change that and we begin to say, well, you know, actually all people are these chosen people and even animals are divine and sacred and they even shouldn't be sacrificed. When we start to go in and change the ways of the temple, we change the ways of worship and prayer to something that's actually meaningful to us that's not just blindly following a tradition we tap into the deeper meta tradition which is the evolution and ascension of the soul and in doing that this is the true process of Judaism this is the only way that you can bring peace to Israel to bring peace to the world because it's just the forces of karma continuously rising up against you for supporting if you support um, you know the original story 
because that story is immoral and it's suppo- we're supposed to change it because it's prophetic. And even as you begin to change it, you'll realize it's not even really coming from you. It's truly coming from Hashem. It truly comes from beyond. And you begin to trust yourself more and you understand you don't need to follow a central leader like what it's doing is saying that everyone has their own intelligence and everyone can like you know they go on their own way it puts you in a really lucid state but at the same time you're lucid but you can't like you know you can't just like enslave everyone else and it's only like you know kill everyone else you can't do that we can't kill anyone you know thou shalt not kill so it's like if you're trying to kill um even you know in the Torah it says that people were trying to like kill and fight in wars but this goes against like the most important commandment so anything that's going against any of these like commandments which are truly the original ones that you hear which are the most important anything that goes against that you can change and everything in the book that is immoral it goes against commandments that are later stated or earlier stated in the book and so it's like it is all it's all really it's the real path that you're supposed to go on it's kind of hidden it's not really explicitly expressed and that may make it it makes it difficult for some people to understand that that's what you're supposed to do and since the you know like the holocaust has happened and people think that you're just not allowed to like change anything because of that but actually that's the reason you are allowed to change it because it would almost it w- it's almost just the mirror image of what the book is telling us to do to others so if you have no like insight and you're not willing to like try to change that and just discover the beautiful intelligence that is this universe which is based in the teachings of Kabbalah it's based in all of that it's saying that all of this can constantly grow we're not just supposed to blindly accept tradition Tradition is always growing and changing. It's not about not evolving. People interpret not going to Jesus as not wanting to evolve, but it's actually saying that you yourself take the responsibility onto yourself and you're not trying to put it into some other person. You know, it's not, we don't need more uh, prophets who are saying, I am the one. Uh, it's me alone. We need more people to be able to handle that kind of realization without saying they're above anyone. Uh, you should say that everyone is supposed to do this. Everyone has this in them. Everyone is direct descendant from the eternal spirit. That is the ultimate truth. That's the truth. It's not that one person is and everyone else no everyone is it's not one person at the top of the pyramid everyone has this ability if they choose to cultivate it so um, that's the truth that's how the faith is supposed to be practiced that's why it's not something that's within time because uh, and that's why you have no enemies because you're really integrating the things that you feel are against you and you're saying you know what I actually am that and I actually need to just uh, accept that accept that I am that which I feel like is my enemy accept that all of it is actually one and then uh, cast out that which seems like fragmentation. So when you do that, you become whole, and when you become whole, everything increases into the infinite. Whereas if you become fragmented, everything will keep fragmenting until you can't 
survive anymore because you're just cut off from everything. So you have to do the opposite of that and accept everything as part of you and then raise it up by then having compassion saying, you know what, this is part of me. So I can't just destroy it. I want to help it because I want to help every part of myself. I can't say that any part of myself is really an enemy. All of it's there for a purpose. All peoples are Hebrew peoples. All beings are Hebrew beings because, you know, it's like Hashem spoke at the beginning to bring all beings into creation. All beings. And Hashem has no form. Uh, just as we have no set form, this is just like, this is not really our full form. Our body is not our full form. And so we are manifest in animals, in trees, in plants, and all of this is holy. All of this is sacred and it can't be treated like it's an object that we own. You know, we're not, it's, we don't own the holy land, you know, we are a part of it. And the only way for it to truly be holy is for us not to own it, you know, and that's the entire paradox. So it's kind of really, it all happens at once. It's not like, but there are divine beings out there who have gone through this entire process and when we begin to do this work of changing the Torah, those beings are aware, those angelic beings are aware, and they come to us and change the world around us and unite us with the celestial, with the wholeness. And that becomes more and more a part of the world. So the more people who see it in this way and do it in this way instead of trying to go to a physical place where there are battles and where people are actually fighting over things that make absolutely no sense, the more people instead choose this path, which will bring the true blessing to you anywhere you are, and it will show you that anyone around you is actually a part of your spirit and a part of the eternal spirit and is totally sacred and divine. When people do that, it uplifts the world, it brings us to a more heavenly world, we start ascending, you know, and that's the entire true purpose, true meaning of Judaism, okay? So, you can look however you want, you can be from any, any heritage, you know, you can have any style, you can pray, and any language you even want, really, even though, uh, you know, it's the belief that Hebrew is the, the basic root uh, language, which I think is, uh, it's true, I think it's true, I do, but, um, it's like you can use any language for it, it's not like any language is disconnected from it, and it's not like, um, all languages are really connected, you know, it's really vibrations, essentially it's vibrations, and, you know, so, that's just the way it is, that's the truth, so, it's not about, you know, never uh, demonize any other force and just say all of anything from that is bad you know it's always you have to look at it um, in a very like you just have to have compassion you know you can't your heart cannot be stiff just love all beings peace and love shalom ahava and then you're in you know then you'll know what to do so that's the true, that's what we truly practice. All of the holidays um, truly are about this process and about continuing us on through this process, you know, and uh, giving us, you know, points to check and like reflect on how far we've progressed and how closely we've been able to manifest the true image rather than the. Um, most base, you know, thing that is just the very, very beginning where, you know, that's just the beginning where we have to begin then to work with it and start to change it into something and bring down the truly heavenly.
It's like before you start to study uh, Torah, you have, or any like religion, you have this idea of what the divine is. And that idea, before you begin any kind of study, is the truth. That's the greatest truth, because that idea is the greatest, most loving. You know, God is purely love, love for everything. And that's what you have to bring in to the Torah. That's what you have to show. Because we know that now, you know? It's like the teachings of Kabbalah, true teachings of Kabbalah, not like ritualistic, but like just the fact that there's this divine tree that exists and that it has an infinite number of qualities and branches and sephiroth. That teaching is... um widely that's the base that we're working with so even if someone isn't jewish they're still part of the tree of life and still if we try to use those qualities and by the way the tree of life even can be changed you can put any sephiroth in any place or even have a different sephiroth that is not originally on the traditional tree that you look at and make an entire new tree in that way so it's like all of it is more when you actually work with the act of creation then you can start to understand it's really just it's an infinite thing that has no real limit the only limit is karma the only limit is that if you call suffering then suffering is going to come back upon you and suffering happens from thinking that you are separate or better than something else, you know. But the true meaning of what it's supposed to show us is that we're all connected in everything we do. There's a unified consciousness that helps us all. And that you should have no fear, you know. Have no fear. There's no reason to ever be paranoid or because... If you're operating under the true principles of holisticness and you see that everyone is God and everyone is you and you are everyone, then you're already there and there's nothing to be afraid of. There will be tests, there will be tribulations, but there's nothing to truly fear, you know, because God supersedes all of this that we see in this physical world. And so that's just the truth. So, um, blessings to all of you. Shalom.